things began to change for me uh, about four years ago. I was uh, without a, a heartbeat for about half an hour and was revived and recovered. And the first thing that I noticed was that I no longer had perfect pitch. You can recognize a note and say, that's a C, that's an F, that's an A. Imagine the shock when I recovered, played my first concert, discovered, wow, I don't know what note that is. I don't know when I walk out to play whether it's going to be a night that is sort of uh, free of issues or I'm struggling. For decades, every time I've walked out on the stage, I had a sense of total confidence. I, I took it for granted, and it's, it's, I'm still adjusting to the fact that uh, it's not something I can depend on anymore. And now, please give a warm welcome to the Blue Valley State. Makoto Ozone and Gary Burton. We've seen so many elder statesmen of jazz go on way past the point of uh, being able to play even halfway decently. And most times they can say, you know, people won't notice. So how it works is at first you notice. Then the guys you're playing with start to notice. And I've always wanted to stop before that became noticeable to others. You sound amazing. I have your record just for my to it every other day. How do I tell that person that, no, um, I'm not playing as well as I you know, would like it to be, and, uh, and it's up to me frankly, to uh, maintain the standards. Yeah, hey, Johnny, how are you? <laughs> Good to see you, man. Good to get back. We all need to take that time. Well, a lot, a lot of big background to it. Yeah, I had planned originally to just fade away, and it just wasn't it was, working. It well, it was because people kept calling to book gigs for next summer, next fall, or whatever, and, and I was running out of excuses <laughs> for why I wasn't going to be available. Right. Well, was, they will find you at home. Yeah, well. There's a way that they will find you. You know, it's so ironic. People come up and say, how, you know, how can you quit now? They'll say, you owe it to your fans. Of course, the fans see this from a different perspective. They don't hear a, a lot of the differences. And in fact, what I get mostly are fans saying, why? How could, what are you talking about? It sounds fantastic, but I want to stop while I'm at my peak rather than compromise. Oh, it's pretty emotional because I know this is the last time I'm going to do this. The last date on the tour is Indianapolis. The irony of it kind of hit me. Well, hey, it's my home state. Why not? You know, we'll tack that on the end. And my mother still lives there. She's 101, so I still feel a connection to the Hoosier state. Turn your, turn your body that way just a little yeah. bit there. Part of it will be a sense of relief. There will be something about knowing that this is it. It's the perfect way to say goodbye.
people have asked me, well, now that you're not going to be playing, uh, what, what else are you going to do in music? And my answer is not a single thing. <laughs> excited about going to some new directions. A traveling musician generally doesn't have much in the way of hobbies, but I collect bonsai trees. I used to see myself primarily as a jazz musician, and that was sort of my, my calling card. But, you know, having to be Gary Burton, just another guy, was a, a new adjustment for me when I you know, first moved to Florida and realized that uh, I wasn't a jazz star. I'm just another uh, person walking around. <laughs> <laughs>